guys, so today's video is going to be another full face of something. And for today's video, we are going to be doing a full face of the most expensive makeup at Sephora. Now, I'm doing this video because it was highly requested from you guys. When I did my full face of the cheapest makeup at Sephora, you guys really wanted to see this version so you guys can compare the differences because I gotta be honest, the cheapest makeup at Sephora is not my favorite. I personally would rather go to the drugstore a hundred times over before I go buy affordable makeup at Sephora. Drugstore makeup for the win, it's way better. And so many of you guys were commenting like, oh my gosh, I wanna see this, but like with all the super pricey stuff over there. And I was like, oh, awesome. That's expensive. <laughs> so I went shopping at Sephora and I bought a full face of the most expensive makeup. And, <laughs> It was a pretty penny, I'm not gonna lie, it was a pretty penny. By the way, you guys like my shirt? It's a John Mayer shirt. <gasps> I love it. It's not a shirt, you know what I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get started. Oh my gosh, I just looked at myself in the viewfinder and I realized I have my brows on. And I was supposed to do my brows with like some sort of Tom Ford eyebrow pencil, I'm sure, but I completely forgot and I didn't even buy a super pricey eyebrow product. Like I have Anastasia. So, uh, we can skip brows, like we usually do. All right, let me pull up Sephora so I can see how much I paid for all of this. I will say though, before I get started, there's a lot of Tom Ford in this video. Apparently it's like the most expensive brand at Sephora, that and um, this fancy one, Christian Louboutin. Still, still don't know how to say that. But we don't have like a giant selection here for today's video. Not much of a variety going on. It's very similar to the cheapest makeup video where everything was like Sephora collection. Everything here is almost Tom Ford. I mean, that's not true. There's, let's get started. Okay, so for primer, I have never been more shocked in my entire life to see the price of this thing. I was literally about to tell you guys that I think this primer was more expensive than the Sicily primer I have in my drawer. Oh my god. They don't sell Sicily at Sephora. I got this at Nordstrom. This is double the price of this. How did I buy this? I, bu I bought this and I do not remember spending $192. That is 100% the most ridiculous thing I've ever bought. Wow. Okay, now this doesn't even look that crazy anyway this is the most expensive primer at sephora this is from a brand called dr barbara strum and it is their anti-aging primer this bad boy is a whopping 85 dollars 85 so just prime your face let that sink in let that sink in 85 dollars all right let's see okay so it feels like a nice moisturizer. It's supposedly a revolutionary hybrid of makeup and skincare that contains powerful antioxidants to keep skin nurtured with a youthful glow. It has hyaluronic acid in it, which is amazing, antioxidants, and pearl pigments as well, which I'm not 100% sure I see the pearl pigments. Wait, yes I do. Oh my gosh, yes I do. Wow, you can't tell unless you really look at it, but there are little tiny shimmer particles in this primer, but it's barely noticeable, which I like because recently I haven't been loving shimmery stuff in my products, but you know what? This is like pilling on my skin. Am I applying too much as I apply more? Is less more with this guy? Watch, let me show you, let me zoom you in. I'm not sure if you can tell, but do you see that? What's happening? That could definitely be me. Maybe I applied too much, but like my face doesn't feel hydrated at all or moisturized. Not saying it's supposed to give you that feeling, but it feels like I have nothing on my face. Just little particles of sand. Like it's legit dusting off. This is bizarre. <laughs> I've never had that experience with a primer. Okay, let's keep going. All right, the priciest foundation at Sephora is the La Mer Soft Fluid Longwear Foundation. I keep thinking that I had this foundation. I wanna say I bought it a while ago. And then I gave it to my mom and then I had to buy it again for today's video, but I definitely bought a shade that was too dark for me. You'll see now, let me show you. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm usually so good at color matching online. I got buff, girl. You are not buff. But this foundation is $120. This is so much money for a foundation. I can't, I can't. So obviously since this is too dark for me, I am gonna cheat and I'm gonna mix in a little bit of a different foundation to make it lighter. This is the LA Girl Pro Color Foundation Mixing Pigment. It's just like a white pigment on the completely opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to price. So I'm gonna take the La Mer foundation. Ooh, that's liquidy. That's like super liquidy. And I'm gonna take like a hair of this. Like that's it, like that's it. 
And okay. Just gonna, oh, still might be too dark, but. Mm. Hmm. This foundation has an interesting scent. But this guy is supposed to give you a very natural, fresh feeling to the face, leaving you a little bit luminous. It's supposed to be silky, weightless, and just look really beautiful and natural while also giving you a long wearing formula. Oh my gosh, I'm feeling a little triggered. I'm not gonna lie. I'm getting flashbacks of elementary school, like a classroom. Oh my gosh, like Miss Aleman's class. I don't know if it's this or if it's the La Mer. Okay, it's definitely not this. Oh my gosh, this La Mer foundation is pretty strong. Okay. <laughs> it smells like strong paint in the bottle, but as I'm applying it to my face, it smells like my elementary school classroom. Like identical, I swear. And I don't necessarily like that, I'm not gonna lie. Elementary school traumatized me. So did middle school. I was pretty good by high school already. Man, I don't like how this smells, but I really like the finish. I mean, it's a little too deep for me, but it really does look like skin. I don't like this primer though, I will tell you right off the bat, because I can tell that the foundation is getting stuck to certain parts of my face because of that primer. Because there was absolutely no moisture, no slippiness to that primer, and since my skin is really, really dry, if I don't put on something that's a little bit dewy underneath or moisturizing, my foundation will skip. So I 100% am gonna continue to use this foundation. Obviously, I paid over $100 for it. But I'm gonna use it with a different primer. That's for sure. If you're sensitive to fragrance, you will not like that foundation at all. Honestly, the finish is beautiful. Like, I'm not gonna lie, this finish is gorgeous, but I don't think it's as beautiful as your $120 remaining in your bank account. That's prettier. I'm gonna be a pissy little biatch throughout this entire video. I just know it because I'm that guy now. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, only when it comes to like myself and my makeup. I'm not stingy when it comes to other people, but if I can get the same finish for like 40 bucks, I will. Although my skin does look really nice right now. Okay, for concealer, we have another La Mer product. When I Googled the most expensive concealer on Sephora and I saw that it was this one and I saw that it only had three stars, I got, I got a little concerned. It is an $80 concealer. $80. And this is what it looks like. It comes in like this stick, which is what's worrying me, not gonna lie. I usually don't love concealers that come in a stick. They're typically a little too drying for me, but Let's see, let's see. Supposedly it's ultra creamy. It's supposed to give you weightless coverage, youth boosting benefits, and antioxidants. Okay, it actually blends out a lot easier than I thought it was gonna blend out because the second I started applying it to my under eyes, I was like, oh my gosh, this is dry. This feels like clay. I don't know about this, but now that I'm blending it out, it's not hard to blend. Not bad. Wow. Let me add some more. Let's see how it builds. This will definitely balance out my foundation shade because this color is a bit light for me. It's in the shade light 12. Well, I don't think it's light for me. I just think compared to this foundation, it looks crazy. I just, I don't love the way these La Mer products smell. Why? Why do they have this scent? I just, I don't like fragrance in my stuff. Um, it does look a little bit drying on the inner corners right here because naturally I do have pretty dry under eyes, but I think if you have like normal under eyes or oily under eyes, you might like this. It's just a hair too matte for me. Okay, let me show you what it looks like. I'm not sure if you can tell on camera, but it looks a little dry in this area. You know what? For everything being so matte, my skin looks pretty glowy. That foundation is really nice. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna set my under eye concealer even though I honestly feel like I don't need to. Maybe just on my lids a bit, but honestly it already feels like it's set itself. But just for poops and giggles, I am gonna set my under eye concealer and I was actually, well I am actually gonna use this because I didn't buy another one. <laughs> because I already had this in my collection and I figured, oh, that Tom Ford Illuminating Pressed Powder in Translucent is so gonna be like the most expensive powder at Sephora, but it's not. It's a La Mer powder and it's called the powder and it's like $90. No, 95. <laughs> And I know I'm a fool, I should have double checked that. This isn't even available anymore. I think this was limited edition. I bought this when I was doing like a luxury brand review on my channel. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know, I know. But is it a Kathleen Lights video if there isn't at least one mess up? And to be honest, for this being an illuminating face powder, it's not very illuminating. It's high. Okay, so I'm gonna finish up my face makeup before I jump into the eyes. 
bronzer time. Obviously the reason why this is the most expensive bronzer at Sephora is because of the size of this thing. This is $112. I mean, it comes in a little pouch, if that means anything to you. I mean, that's absolutely nothing to me, but just saying. This is the Tom Ford Glow Bronzer in the shade Terra. I actually have this bronzer in the small version, but I had to get this version because this is the most expensive bronzer at Sephora. The mini isn't bad. I have it. It's really nice. It's a very smooth bronzer, very creamy, easy to blend. It's good quality. Like, don't get me wrong. This formula, excellent. But damn, that's expensive. The smaller version, the one that I have, is $75, and it's this big. I kind of feel like getting the bigger one might be a better investment if this is like the only bronzer you're ever gonna use. But I'm not exactly sure, because I don't know how much product is in the smaller one. But anyway, I'm gonna apply this bronzer to my face using my really, really expensive wet and wild brush that I have to clean. This bronzer is really nice though. Barely any fallout. Like I said, super creamy. And the tone is really nice too. I also have gold dust. This bronzer comes in two different shades. And I think I actually like gold dust more. So I'm a little confused as to why I bought Terra in this size. <laughs> but this one's really nice too. Gold dust just has a shimmer to it. This one is better for like bronzing and contouring. Man, I was thinking about the video I posted the other day of me doing my makeup in the dark and like the night vision. And I just got so many ideas of night vision videos I can do. I wanna do my own episode of Ghost Facers. If you don't know what Ghost Facers is, we can't be friends. But I don't know, I'm thinking about it. I might do my own episode of Ghost Facers and try to look for Marisu. I don't know, it might be an interesting video. I'm feeling very brave in 2019, apparently. So yes, that is the bronzer on my face. Very buttery, very smooth, love the color. I'm into it, I'm into it. I think it's an excellent bronzer, but it's definitely a look you can get for less, for sure. Okay, so for blush and highlight, it's still Tom Ford. I picked up this cheek color in the shade Love Lust, and as soon as I opened it, I immediately thought of Milani Luminoso. Look at this, doesn't it look like it? <gasps> So pretty though, oh, I love it. I mean, I don't know if it's a dupe or anything. I haven't swatched them side by side or anything like that, but it's similar. So I'm gonna pop that on my cheeks. I'm actually very excited for this because I have been loving blush recently, as you know. So trying new blushes is just always so fun for me now. That's pretty, it's not super, super pigmented. It's a blush that you definitely have to build up, but I know a lot of you guys prefer that. It's very glowy. It has like a very strong golden sheen to it. It's actually very, very pretty, very natural, very light. But if your skin tone is like medium or deeper, this might be too light for you. But I think it's really, really pretty. But like, honestly, even though I'm loving this, you can get this type of vibe with Milani Luminous so for sure very nice oh, I really like it it's very pretty and then to continue with this golden glow I'm gonna highlight my cheeks with this Tom Ford Soleil radiant perfecting powder and it's in the shade guilt glow and mine actually came broken when I opened my Sephora package and I opened this and I saw that a big chunk was missing I almost cried that's like ten dollars right there <gasps> It's okay, we can get through this, we can get through this. At least it didn't shatter completely, okay? Silver lining, silver lining. I'm gonna take my Real Techniques setting brush and I'm gonna dip it into this highlight. It's a traditional like white gold and I actually don't love white gold highlights. I prefer like a standard gold or something like that, but let's see. That is so pretty and so highlighty. It's gorgeous. But like, do you see what I mean? Why I don't love white gold highlights because you kind of see the white when the light isn't hitting your face. You see like the undertone of the powder, which this kind of highlight is perfect for you if you're super, super, super fair because regular gold highlights will not work on you if you're very, very fair. So this is definitely for you. Okay, so I guess that's it. That is the face, very natural. Now, oh my gosh, I haven't been telling you the prices of anything. <gasps> Actually, I just missed my blush and my highlight. <laughs> that was dramatic, I'm sorry. This delicious little guy is a whopping $63. 63 and this highlight is 68 at the end of this video. I will be giving you guys the total price. So uh, 
stay tuned. Okay, now it's time to work on the eyes. I got really, really lucky when searching up the most expensive palette on Sephora's website because I currently own them. The Natasha Denona 28 eyeshadow palettes are the most expensive right now on Sephora. They are $239 each. $239. My So Jaded palette has 30 eyeshadows and it's not $239. It's actually like $200 less than that. <laughs> but I mean, Natasha Denona formula is unbeatable and I'm not gonna lie, I feel like these palettes are better quality than her newer palettes, like the Bebop palette, the Sunset palette. I truly feel like these are better quality. I don't know what's in these. I don't know if she made them better. I, I honestly don't know if she's changed the formula because these palettes are old. I don't know what's up with that, but this palette is the best, like these palettes are the best palettes she's ever created. Granted, they're the most expensive, but I do think quality wise, they're the best. And if you are looking to invest in one of these, if there's anybody out there, I personally would recommend the green brown palette because in my opinion, it's a little bit more wearable than the purple blue palette. But this one is nicer to look at. So I guess it just depends on how you're feeling. <laughs> to keep things fair, I'm gonna be working out of just one palette and I'm gonna be using the green brown one today because I'm gonna do a very natural look. I'm actually gonna go out to dinner today, so I'm not gonna do anything nuts. But I'm gonna be working out of this palette, and you know the drill. I'm gonna do something very, very simple. And we're just gonna breeze through this part, so let's do it. Okay, so that's pretty much all I'm gonna do with the eyes. I always do this look whenever I use this palette because I'm obsessed with this shade. There's something so special about it. I can't, it's amazing. And like I said, this palette is unreal. Just the way that the eyeshadows blend. I've never experienced anything like this palette ever, which I'm, I feel like maybe they changed the formula of her shadows. Maybe to try to make the formulas less expensive, like in production, I don't, I don't know. But that formula is unbeatable, at least when they first made this palette because I've had it for years now. But anyway, I'm gonna pop on some eyeliner and some liquid liner now. And it's funny because when I bought the liquid liner, I didn't realize what shade I was buying and I got Rouge Louboutin, oh by the way, this is the Christian Louboutin Oil, O-E-I-L. It is the Oil Vinyl Liquid Liner. Oh wait, <laughs> underneath it, it says in English. Okay, this is the Luminous Ink Liner and I got mine in the shade Rouge Louboutin 001, which is a red. I don't know why I thought this was black, but it's red and it's actually pretty cool because I have a lot of black eyeliners and this packaging is really, really cool. It's definitely a weapon, but I like it. And this is what it looks like. It has a felt tip, but it kind of curves. I'm not sure if you can tell. And this felt tip is not as thin. Like it doesn't thin out as much as I would want it to. So let's see how this looks. But before I go in with that, I'm gonna go in with some eyeliner. This is the Velvet Eye Definer from the same brand. And this is such a beautiful packaging. They kill it with the packaging. Also with the prices, but. Definitely with the packaging. Okay, like I said, this is the eye definer and this is in the shade Zulu. Oh my gosh, it's a twisty, right? Or am I just breaking this? Oh, it's not a twisty. I am just breaking this. Okay, uh, I'll go get the sharpener. Oh no, wait, it comes with a sharpener. <laughs> Shit, it better come with a sharpener. 
charging me an arm and leg for this eyeliner. I mean, to be honest, it should have come sharpened already. Okay, that's pretty good. This is a dark brown color, by the way. In case you're wondering, this is a $40 eyeliner. I'm gonna tight line with this and apply it to my waterline as well. Okay, that went on really creamy, really buttery. It's nice. My ColourPop eyeliners go on just as nice. <laughs> I don't know, that's kind of like an okay product, I would say. This liquid liner is $75 though. $75 for a liquid liner is crazy. But let's test it out anyway. Okay, um, I hate this eyeliner. <laughs> now, I don't know if it's because it's red and a red formula is harder to make than a black formula, but this was pretty watery. I had to do like two or three layers of this to really get that red to show up pigmented and deep because the first layer you do, yeah, it looks pigmented in the moment, but as it starts to dry, it kind of fades. And not only that, it gets pretty crispy. Like I really feel it on my lids right now. Like when it dries, it hardens and it becomes really bumpy and textured. But I feel like that's because I had to do three layers to get this color to really show up. I don't know if the black one is better and maybe it's not as watery. And obviously this is a luminous liquid liner. It says it in the name. So I wasn't expecting a super matte red intense liner but I definitely expected it to be better than this I expected it to be more rich more pigmented especially something that's $75 for that price you better be blowing me away like I have drugstore eyeliners that I prefer the formula on like TBH. I will say that I really do love the curve on this felt tip. Like, let me zoom you in so you can see it. Do you see how it kind of curves down a bit there? That is amazing for hugging and cupping your eye perfectly. I really enjoyed that, but that's it. Okay, so before I pop on some falsies, I am gonna go in with a little bit of mascara. And it's funny, I can't believe this is the second time I'm purchasing this mascara because the first time I bought it, I bought it for that luxury video I was doing a few year, a couple years ago. Even though I loved it, I was amazed by this mascara. I made a vow to never buy it again. But yet, here we are. Another Kristen Louboutin product. This is the Lash Amplifying Lacquer Mascara. Do you guys remember this? This is the craziest mascara I've ever come across. This weighs like 30 pounds. It is insane. I've never seen packaging this unreal on a mascara. I'm not gonna lie. It is beautiful. It is stunning. And the formula is actually amazing. Again, like I said in that video, I don't think it's worth $70, but I did use it and I enjoyed it a lot. Oh my god, I had so much of that red eyeliner bleed into my lashes, so now my lashes are really, really crispy and really hard. Love that for me. Okay, so these are the finished eyes. I really, really, really love how they turned out. This mascara is incredible. So, so, so freaking good. It reminds me a lot of the Pat McGrath mascara. It's very intense and very, very, very black. And uh, yeah, I'm into it. So let's go ahead and finish up the face. The only thing I have left to apply is my lip color. <gasps> I didn't buy a super pricey setting spray. Damn it! Oh, I don't have that. It's the Tata Harper Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid Floral Essence. The closest thing I have to the most expensive setting spray is the Lila 
this guy. I have to go grab it. The Lila B A Glow Face Mist. This is the closest thing I have to the most expensive setting spray because the Tata Harper one is $72. Crazy. And this one is $48, which is a big difference, I feel. I am gonna go ahead and set my face before I go in with my lip product. This is a very, very, very dewy setting spray. So I'm only gonna do a couple spritz. And also for this being so pricey, I don't love the mist on it. It comes out a little bit aggressive. This glow mist is great, don't get me wrong. I just don't love how oily it makes everything around you when you set your face. So if you're gonna use this, I would recommend stepping away from your vanity, then setting your face and then going back to it. Because if not, it creates like a little bit of a film on everything. It does give you a beautiful glow to the skin though. Really nice. If you're super dry, you will love that. All right, and to officially finish the look, We've got more Grace and Little Batin products. I have the lipstick. Ooh, the packaging on this is unreal. And then I also have the lip gloss to go on top. But before we go in with those products, I am gonna line my lips. And I picked up the Tom Ford Lip Sculptor. And this is $47, a $47 lip liner. But I mean, at least it comes with a little brush on the other side. So this is what it looks like. You get the lip liner on this side, and then you also get this little brush on the other side. So let's see, I picked mine up in the shade Invite, 02 Invite. So I just filled in my lips a bit. Again, I don't think this is worth $47. That's crazy. Now I'm gonna go in with the lipstick and I actually don't remember what shade I got. Is it on the packaging? Oh yeah, okay, this is the name of the lipstick. It says it here on the side, it's 217S, but the actual name is Rose de Dessert. And it's a sheer, bold lip color that accents the natural radiance of your lips with a high shine finish. This lipstick was $90, guys, 90, nine, and then a zero. And it's crazy to even think about because I remember when the NARS Audacious lipsticks came out and they were $30, I almost fainted. I can't, this is so damn expensive. Ooh, but it feels amazing. <laughs> wow, that's very creamy, very emollient, nice and shiny, like super shiny. And it doesn't have a nasty scent, like a lot of luxury lipsticks do, so I can really appreciate that. It smells like nothing. Okay, this is definitely a little bit more mauve than I wanted for this look, but I only bought one lipstick. So I was not about to buy options. So obviously the packaging is incredible. This color is beautiful. I love the finish. It feels amazing on the lips. This is great. I really, really like this. Would I be buying more? Never, <laughs> never. But do I love it? Yes. Okay, I bought a lip gloss to apply on top, and honestly, I didn't think about the eyeshadow when it came to the lip products I was buying, which is okay. So the lip gloss I bought, it comes in a clear packaging. It's very similar packaging, only you can see the gloss on the inside because it's clear, which I do really like. But I got the lip gloss in the shade Dora Candy. The actual name of the gloss isn't anywhere on the packaging. I know it's called Dora Candy because I can see it, but I wouldn't know the name of it unless I searched it up, which is annoying. <laughs> but I'm gonna pop on some Dora candy. Ooh, it's very glossy, like very shiny. I didn't think it was gonna be this shiny. Wow, that's really pretty. Holy crap, this gloss is super shiny. I didn't think I was gonna like it that much. I thought I was gonna put it on and be like, a pink gloss. Wow, but I'm like, wow. Oh my gosh, I love this gloss. Let me show it to you up close. Can you see the dimension in the gloss? There's like little, Flecks of shimmer. I'm definitely gonna be getting my money's worth out of this. I'm gonna throw it in my purse and I'm gonna wear it every single day because $90 is ridiculous. Oh, I'm sorry, this is 85. A little sheeper. But okay guys, that completes this video. This was a full face of the most expensive makeup sold at Sephora. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna leave a number right here, a very large number right here, and that will tell you how much my entire face costs. I haven't added anything up yet. I'm gonna do that in editing. But as you can imagine, it's expensive. And I can tell you honestly right now, looking at myself in the mirror, this look is beautiful, but you can 100% get the same look with more affordable items. You don't need a luxurious price tag on your makeup to get a luxurious look with your makeup, in other words. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can agree, but this was a super fun video to film. I really enjoyed myself today with you guys, sitting here, 
talking about expensive stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That completes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you so, so, so much. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. That was this. <laughs> no, wait a minute. No, no, there you go. No, there.